today's video, I wanted to go over some strategies that can be applied when running index maintenance. And these are specifically for SQL Server. And I've got a couple other videos out there where I talk about the Ola Halligren index maintenance solution. And this, uh, this video is really a how to apply um, those, those index maintenance routines and when to apply and just some things you can, that you need to think about as you're uh, constructing your index maintenance strategy. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is using time limits. So what you can do is limit the amount of time that your index maintenance is running. And you really need to know your environment when, when you're trying to figure this out. So you need to know exactly when you can run your index maintenance. You don't want to be running it at peak periods. Ideally, you're running it, you know, let's say you've got a window over overnight or on the weekend where you've got low activity on your system. That's when you really want to be running index maintenance. And if you're on uh, standard edition, you really need to be careful because you've got to deal with table locking and things like that. So some databases on your server can also have different uses profiles than others. So if you've got a server with 20 or 30 databases on them, they may not all have the same usage profile and you need to consider that as well. So you want to also think about if your maintenance windows are more open on certain days of the week or on the weekends, usually that's going to be the case. On the weekend, you probably have a wider window than necessarily you'd have on a, on a Monday or a Tuesday night during the week. But of course, every environment is different. So you really need to consider your specific environment when you're thinking about this. And then you need to schedule accordingly. And as I mentioned, the index optimized procedure from Ella Helligren actually has a time limit parameter so you can use that, that parameter to figure out how long you want things to run. The one thing that I always stress with the time limit parameter is that it governs the, the time that the last index optimized operation starts. So for let's say that you've got a big, big index that's about to start, and you've got a time limit of three hours, and you've been running for two hours and 59 minutes. Well, that procedure is going to kick off, and it's going to run on that index until it's done whether it takes a minute or an hour. So you need to consider that as well. You might even want to lessen that time limit a little bit just to account for that behavior. If you're not using index optimize, what you can do is you can create a separate watchdog job that enforces the time limit. So what it's going to do is look at your index maintenance job, whatever its name is, see how long it's been running. And after that time limit has been exceeded, it can issue a, a stop job command in uh, to the SQL agent and that will stop your job. The next strategy I'd like to discuss is running in parallel. So if you have multiple databases on your SQL server, you can actually run index maintenance in parallel. Now the thing you need to, to uh, think over is if you have if your server has enough capacity to handle the additional load of running multiple index maintenance processes at the same time. So you need to Monitor, you know, I would I would suggest starting out monitoring your server when index maintenance is running and it's not in parallel and seeing if you got some extra CPU and memory available so that you could actually handle additional load. And as as I've mentioned in some for some of the other strategies, the index optimized procedure has a parameter databases in parallel that you can set and it's just a number so you can set two, three or whatever number you want above one to run a certain amount of databases in parallel with their index maintenance processes. And if you're not using index optimize, another way you can approach this is to create separate jobs on your server that, that uh, run on different sets of databases, and then you can start them at the same time. So, you know, you could divide your databases into into two groups if you're going to run in, in parallel, have, have two processes running in parallel, and put each database into one of those groups. And of course, you're going to want to consider the relative sizes of those databases when you're creating these groups. So the next thing I want to talk about are the actual size of your transaction logs. You need to make sure that they're sized appropriately. And with, with respect to index maintenance, which generates a lot of transaction log activity, what you want to do is basically look at the, the size of your largest index partition. So whether you're using partitions in SQL Server, uh, there, 
every index is actually partitioned. Uh, you're just limited to the number of partitions you can use when you don't have enterprise addition to one. But you want to look at your largest index partition and size your transaction log accordingly to that, because that's going to be the, the largest transaction that you're going to be dealing with when you're doing index maintenance. And if you're running in parallel, that might make this a little tricky and a little more challenging. So if you're running multiple index maintenance, either threads at the same time, or if you've got multiple jobs, you might you have to consider the coordinated size of all of those index operations that are happening and then size accordingly. And the next point I want to make here is using fragmentation as the input to your index maintenance processes. So the whole idea of maintaining indexes is to operate and remove fragmentation in indexes. So if you have indexes that are not fragmented, chances are they don't need to be rebuilt or reorganized. So there are ways to retrieve information in SQL Server about your indexes and how fragmented they are. So there's queries that uh, you can come up with and feed your processes based on the most the highest priority indexes based on fragmentations. And you want to use that as the input to your process. And as I've mentioned before, the index optimized procedures from Ola Hellegren have a parameter or have a set of parameters that allow you to control and designate actions for what's going on here. So these, these uh, parameters define where the fragmentation levels are. So you can set them as percentages. So if you have fragmentation above 90%, you can set your fragmentation levels accordingly. So you can set fragmentation level one to be 90 and fragmentation level two to be 50. And those are percentages of the index fragmentation. And then the actions are the fragmentation low, medium, and high. And that's what you would tell the index optimized procedure what action it needs to take, whether it needs to rebuild the index or reorganize the index. And again, if you're if you're on standard edition, you generally can't uh, afford in most cases, if you've got a 24 by seven system or even close to that, you can't afford to do index rebuilds. You would do re index reorganizes in standard edition. And I've got a video that I, I that covers specifically what you need to do if you've got standard edition and you're using index optimize. For today's video, I, I wanna thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you learned something, please like, you know, like the video, consider subscribing to the channel. And I'm here, you know, if you guys have more questions, send them if they're related to index maintenance or anything else database related. Hey, if it's something I can provide some, uh, some information on, I'll be glad to create a video for you. Thanks a lot. Bye.